This video is here to kind of help you get to know what to do during your first week at U of T. There's a top 10 list of things to know about at U of T during your first week. There's so many things in fact that I need to get a helper in order to do this whole list. You can click on any of these things now or you can just watch the entire video. Arriving. If you're living in residence, your residence office will tell you when your move-in date is. It's usually the week before classes start. If you haven't heard back by the end of August, make sure to contact them to ask. Whether you're living in residence or commuting, the best way to get to know the campus and meet other students is by attending Orientation Week run by your college in the week before classes start. It's a full week of fun events, tours, and helpful information to get you off to a great start. Don't miss this one and only chance to take part in your orientation as a first year student. If you can't attend the full week, many colleges offer shorter versions of orientation that you can join. At the very least, everyone should attend their college day on Tuesday, September 6th for the free orientation sponsored by their college registrar's office. International students. It's a big transition to move from another country to Toronto to study. There are lots of things you should do in your first or second week to ensure that your transition is as smooth as possible. As an international student, you will need to get your university health insurance plan card in case you need to visit a doctor. You'll also need to set up a local bank account and cell phone plan, and you may need to buy new clothes for a new climate. The Center for International Experience on campus is dedicated to assisting international students make the transition to Canada. They're located at 33 St. George Street, just north of College Street. This is the place to go to get your UHIP card and to get help with any questions that you have regarding immigration, visas, or work permits. There is a wide variety of programs hosted by the Center that are designed to help international students adjust to a new culture, improve their English language skills, meet new friends, and to explore the city of Toronto and beyond. Check out the Center for International Experiences handy checklist of things that you should do before and after you arrive in Toronto. T-Card and email address. If you haven't gotten your T-Card yet, now is the time to get it. Your T-Card is your personal identification and you'll need it to access many services and buildings on campus. For more information about T-Cards, check out our Getting Your T-Card video. You also need your T-Card in order to set up your University of Toronto email account. Although you may already have a Hotmail, Gmail, Yahoo, or other email account, the only email address that the University of Toronto will use to send you information once school starts is your University of Toronto UTOR mail account. You can link your UT email account to your other email accounts, but make sure that you check your University of Toronto email account frequently or you will miss important information that will be sent to you regularly by your college and by the Faculty of Arts and Science. Government Loans Most student loan documents will not be available until the first week of class. If you are receiving Ontario student loans, you can pick up your documents at your registrar's office. You will need to bring your social insurance card, your T-card, and another piece of government-issued photo ID. Your college registrar will provide you with instructions on how to process your loan documents. If you are receiving government loans from another Canadian province, you need to take your loan documents to your college registrar's office to be signed. Once you've processed your loan documents, the funds will usually be deposited directly to your personal bank account within a week. You then have to make sure that your fees are paid. You're responsible for making payments from your bank to the University of Toronto. For more information about fees, check out the Paying Your Fees video. Textbook. If you want to find out about some of your textbooks early, you can find a list on the UT Bookstore website by late August. However, you should wait until after you've attended your classes to buy your textbooks. The professor will explain what textbooks are required and where to buy them. You can buy textbooks new, but you can often save money by buying them used, renting them from the bookstore, or accessing them through short-term library loans. The main UT bookstore is located in the Koffler Center at the corner of St. George and College. There are also a number of other bookstores close to campus that sell new and used books. Lockers. 
If you're not going to be living on campus, you probably don't want to be carrying your stuff around with you all day. Most colleges offer lockers that you can rent for a very reasonable price. You should check with your college registrar for information on locker rentals. You can also rent a locker from the Arts and Science Student Union in Sydney Smith Hall, and day lockers are available for free at the Athletic Center and at Hart House. Places to eat. There are lots of places to eat on campus. Many offer vegetarian, vegan, and halal options, and more and more are offering locally sourced organic produce. Many college dining halls are open to everyone, even if you aren't a student at that college or living in residence there. Even if you're a commuting student, you can still purchase a meal plan to eat on campus. There are many meal plan options to choose from. You can access an interactive map of the St. George campus at the link below. It shows all of the places to eat to help you plan your meals and snacks between classes. You should also take advantage of what the City of Toronto has to offer beyond the boundaries of the St. George campus. The population of Toronto is extremely diverse, and as a result, there are an incredible number of restaurants, cafes, and bistros featuring a wide variety of foods and cuisines from hundreds of different countries and cultures. Make sure to take advantage of the fact that you are studying in one of the most multicultural and cosmopolitan cities in the world. Laptops. Although you might already own a desktop computer or a laptop, you are not required to have a laptop at UT. In fact, many departments advise that you wait until after your first year to purchase a computer so that you have a better idea of what you might need. Many students simply use the computers available on campus to get their work done. There are computer terminals available to use for free at the many libraries across the campus, and students also have access to computer labs at their college. Finding your classroom. When you enrolled in courses, you probably noticed that your class locations were listed on Rosie. You can find the building and room codes listed under the course code in your personal timetable. At the bottom of the timetable, you can click on Map My Classes to see a Google map of where all the buildings are. For some classes, you may see building codes only, with no room number provided. For example, CH for Convocation Hall. That's because these buildings are large, single lecture halls, so there's only one room, which you'll easily find when you arrive at the building. If you're taking part in orientation, you'll likely get a tour of campus, but you should walk through your schedule before the first day of classes to make sure you know where you need to go and how long it'll take to get there. You don't want to be late for your first class. Classes start on Monday, September 12th. All classes start 10 minutes past the hour. In the first week, there are no labs or tutorials, so all you have to do is attend your lecture sections. Attending classes. At the first lecture, your professor will give you a syllabus, which lists all the requirements for the course, including textbooks, readings, assignments, the marking scheme, information about any labs and tutorials, plus information on how to get in contact with the professor and TA when you need to. It's extremely important to read through the syllabus for each course carefully and hang on to it to refer to you until the course is over. So, that's it. I hope you learned some stuff about what to do during your first week at school. And if you have any questions at all, remember that you can always message your registrars and their information is in the contact list below.